Have you noticed that the London Underground is getting hotter every year? Apparently it is according to this video. Since I've only been in it once, can't really compare it, but I'm really curious to see if you have noticed that or if it's kind of a common theme. Like people generally know that the London Underground is getting hotter every year. As always with these, since I'm not there, I do like to hear your stories about it. Maybe when you're young, you noticed no issues at all, or maybe it was a little warm, whereas now it's... <laughs> It's like a sauna in there, or it's hot in some of the stations, certain sections of the underground. But I definitely like to hear your view on this and if it's actually happening, if they're doing anything to combat it. And let's jump into the why. Here we go. This is a poster from 1926, pitching London's underground as the best place to um, not burn alive in a horrible fire, apparently. At the time, it was a pretty fair pitch. In the early 1900s, the subway platforms in the London Underground would remain around 14 degrees Celsius or 57 degrees Fahrenheit year-round, which is pretty much the ambient temperature of the Earth. But then something weird started to happen, particularly on London's central line. Oh. Year after year, the temperature inside the tunnels would get a little bit hotter than the year before. And before you call me a soy boy, lib boy, science boy, and slam your laptop shut, no, this is not one of my preachy climate change videos. Climate change is when stuff heats up here. This is about stuff heating up here. It's an engineering problem, and it's a pretty big one. These days, the temperature inside the central line regularly breaks 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. I must have been on that line before, and I have noticed that it is warm in there. Kind of uncomfortably warm in certain areas but I feel like a lot of undergrounds are like this. I'm, I'm curious to see if this is specific to London. Uh, kind of seems like it may be specifically this line. Which, as articles on this subject love to point out, is technically above the legal limit for transporting most farm animals. So in short, this tunnel is hot and it's only getting hotter. But oh, why? No. Well, the question of why the central line is so hot is really the question of why the central line can't be cooled down. You see, any subway system is going to generate heat, and a lot of it. These pesky heat molecules come from a couple of different places, but they mostly come from the trains themselves. You see, trains generate a lot of friction starting and breaking over and over again, and this friction gets converted into heat, which gets trapped in the tunnels, yada yada yada, we all learn this in friction class. But somewhat unique to London's underground, only about 45% of the underground is actually underground. And you'd think that would make it easier to cool the trains down, but you'd think wrong. When the trains go above ground, particularly during warmer, sunnier months, they absorb a lot of solar oh. radiation and carry it right back underground where it gets trapped and converted into British sweat. So, okay, subway tunnels get hot. But as I mentioned before, most subway systems around the world are not so hot that bringing a pig on them constitutes two different crimes. And that's because most subway lines have a way to get rid of this heat, while the central line does not. But to explain why, we need to talk about the way that the central line was built. You see, London's underground has two different kinds of tunnels. Subsurface tunnels, like the Circle Line and the Metropolitan Line, and deep tube tunnels, like this video's protagonist, the Central Line. Now, the subsurface tunnels were built earlier, and to this day, they still don't have any problem venting heat. When these lines were dug under London, they were designed around steam power trains, which meant that they needed plenty of ventilation in order to not poach the trains in their own train juices. But when the first deep tube tunnels were dug in the 1890s, this wasn't a concern. The trains running through these tunnels would be powered for the very first time by electricity, which in the 1890s was like saying these trains would be powered by magic. And the engineers were like, these magic trains sure are- That's true, why would you need to vent a train that is runoff electric compared to what they are used to? All right, kind of seeing their point here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great. They don't emit smoke or steam or anything. So let's just make these tunnels as small as possible and dig as few ventilation shafts as we possibly can, because apparently ventilation shafts frighten horses, and horses are a thing that will definitely outlast this metro <laughs> line. So let's all go to the pub and have whatever terrible beer is available to drink in the current year, 1890. I might be paraphrasing a little bit, but that's basically what they said. Now, in fairness to Yol engineers who didn't foresee their tunnels gradually heating up to pig roasting temperatures over the course of 13 decades, these lines were originally entirely underground, and that would have ultimately kept them a whole lot cooler than they are now. So let's talk solutions, and because I'm in a bit of a mood, let's talk about why most of these solutions won't work. As an American, my first impulse when I see something that's too hot is to strap an AC on it. But unlike some of the underground's other lines, which do have air-conditioned trains, the central line can't fit AC units on their trains because the tunnels are hardly big enough for the trains wow. themselves. And even if you could design AC systems to fit on these trains, which they do plan to do by 2030, it's actually going to make the problem way worse. Ironically, air-conditioned... Yeah, it's going to pump out all of the heat 
out of the trains and into the tube. Seems like it's making it a lot worse. I mean, it's, it's like a it's like a bandage for the for the issue right here. It's a temporary fix. Seems like they have to. I mean, I don't know how deep these trains are. I don't know if he said how deep these trains were, but that's crazy how small, how tight the room is for these. So they can't even put air conditioning above the train. It's kind of freaky. <laughs> but this is just a, you know, a bandage. Trains tend to generate even more heat since cooling down the inside of the cars means expelling hot air into the tunnels. This is one of the bigger cooling problems that the New York City subway faces, for example. So don't worry, Londoners, you're safe from the scourge of air conditioned travel for at least another decade. The other somewhat obvious solution is to just dig more ventilation shafts. That's what oh, they did no. on the other deep tube tunnels, like the Jubilee. You know, just because the central line was designed before scientists had invented friction doesn't mean we can't go back and fix their mistakes except it kind of does actually. The Central Line's other big problem is that it's, well, central. It's right under some of the busiest and most True. developed parts of the city, and Nando's has a strict policy against venting boiling subway fumes into the middle of their restaurant. Now, there have been some mitigating measures put in place, or at least pitched, like solar reflective paint, brakes that absorb the energy that they generate, hmm. and air conditioning individual stations while just hoping that trains don't ever get stuck in the actual tunnels long enough to bake everyone on board alive. But the fact remains that the trains are still generating a lot of heat, and about 79% of that heat is still getting absorbed into the clay surrounding the tunnels. And I don't know if anyone has realized this yet, but this might turn into a giant infrastructure problem if London were to, say, endure a massive heat wave. Um, I'm not sure how to end this video. This is just a bad thing. It's just a thing that's bad and true. So there you go, information. On the bright side, the day is about six minutes closer to being over. All right, well, that concludes the video there. I do know that it's cold there quite a bit. So in some ways, it must be kind of nice when it's freezing outside and you go into the tube and it's really toasty and warm in there. Nice, a nice sauna it must kind of defrost you. Then you go out into the bitter cold and then you kind of wish you didn't even do that because it's your, your body's whipping to burning to freezing, you know, back and forth over time. But honestly, it does sound kind of nice. It's a great feeling for the body when you go from freezing cold into a nice kind of sauna, sauna area, so. But otherwise, when there's an event such as a heat wave, which happened only a couple months ago, I could not imagine. This would not be a fun time. But generally, I didn't think I had an issue. I don't really remember it being overly hot at all. And I think I was staying in more East London and there is a lot of time above ground. But if you go in the central line here, let me know what it's like. Is it is it actually, is it hot? Is it just well known like, oh yeah, that's, that's the hot underground, do not go there. Or what it's like, and if you've noticed a difference, like these guys right here, they look miserable. All these people. <laughs> But this is something that kind of popped up in my feed and I was like, oh wow, seems seems kind of interesting. And I'm curious to see how they tackle this issue in the future if it continues to get warmer and warmer. So until that time, thank you for watching. Thank you for making it to the end and have a good rest of your day. Stay out of this, this heat if you can.